An at-fault claim is something that happens in insurance all the time. We'll talk more specifically about car insurance, but this can be true with home insurance as well. Not as likely because the house isn't driving down the road and moving, but in car insurance, the at-fault party is usually the one that has to pay for the damages, depending on the state that you live in. Some states have what's called a no-fault rule or law that you go fix your own car, they go fix their own car, and then the two insurance companies will battle it out in the background. Knowing that, let's go over the different types of fault and how insurance companies determine fault, at least in the payout of a claim. Technically, legally, if it goes to court, then the fault isn't determined by an insurance company. They don't determine that. The laws that are in place, there's different types of negligence, and we'll go over the three to four main versions of negligence and how each state handles those and go over how that fault is played out. Now we have the common, which is clear cut, 100% you just know, there's no questioning, is if you hit a parked car and that parked car was legally parked and you hit it, you weren't paying attention, you dropped your phone, you were speeding, all of the things, then you're 100% at fault. We just know that. Now that doesn't change those states that are no fault states that you still go fix your car, they go fix their car. If they don't have the right coverage, then they can go after you or your insurance. Most of the time they'll go after your insurance because they are the ones that have the money right now. If that doesn't work, then they'll have to go after you, hire a lawyer, and all of those things. What we commonly see is something that's called a comparative negligence. That's where they take a look at percentages of faults, and probably most states, or at least more than half of the states, have comparative negligence fault, where if you are speeding and the other person is speeding, but then they stop and you rear-end them. So you're probably a 60-ish percent at fault because yeah, you were speeding, you hit the other driver, you failure to yield, and the other driver was speeding. So there's a partial fault that they had. Maybe you guys were chasing each other. I don't know the scenario. But in that case, there's comparative negligence. In those scenarios, your insurance is gonna pay that percentage that was awarded, and then their insurance is gonna pay their percentage. So in this scenario, I said 60%, yours would pay 60% of the claim, the other insurance would pay 40%. Now the 40%, even though it's comparative, a lot of the times most insurance companies won't increase the rate because they're less than 51%. Now that's another one we're gonna talk about, but in general, most insurance companies wanna clear cut who really caused the accident. And if you're not the one that caused it, it's likely that you're not gonna get hit on your insurance to have that increase. Now that's a debate. Let me know in the description below if you've had that, what state you're in, and if that has affected you. Because some states do count not at fault claims, and some states do count different, or some companies count different levels of fault. That's what leads into the modified comparative negligence, which is essentially no fault. If you are 51% or more at fault, you're the one that takes the blame. If you're 49 or lower than 50%, then your insurance may pay the claim in a no-fault state, but you're not gonna be the one that gets affected. In most of those states, you're the one that has to pay your own medical. So the no-fault states, you typically have a medical built into the policy. We'll use Michigan, for example. They have something called PIP, personal injury protection. And it's usually unlimited. There's different levels and there's other videos that we can go into depth on that. But that medical is meant for you specifically and people in your vehicle that live in your home. So any resident that is with you that's in your vehicle, you have that medical. That's different from other states where you can purchase medical, but it doesn't come built into the policy. So in Michigan, you really don't have that choice to remove it unless you fit certain criteria. And in that case, you're already gonna be covered. Now the state is gonna help pick up some of that bill if you don't have the right coverage versus your insurance, you're gonna be paying that extra cost to have that built into your policy. So it doesn't matter who's at fault in this scenario, you're the one that's gonna get paid either way. But again, it's unfortunate in those cases, having that being paid out can affect your future cost of insurance. And the last type is contributory is negligence where you're really mostly at fault. Your insurance may not pay out if you're 5% at fault in this scenario. If there's only like three or four, I think five states that allow that to where you can even have that as an option. It's just built into the way the laws are created. 
in that scenario, you're probably going to carry the right coverage to protect yourself. So if you did contribute that contributory negligence to that fault, and if it was just a little bit of a percentage, then, or you were the majority, I'm sorry, reverse that, where you're 95% at fault, then your insurance isn't necessarily going to pay for that 5% that's going to come out of your pocket. Now there's usually a coverage you can purchase that adds to that to if so if you are the one that has that issue then that's just waived and just generally paid for so again how do insurance companies specifically determine fault that's essentially the versions of fault that you can have the actual adjuster is going to work separately so you have two different insurance companies if there's two cars involved they're going to do their research and the other company is going to do their research and determine they're going to do interviews they're going to look at the police report they're going to see what was the scenarios where was the car hit and they have these general guidelines that they can use to determine who's at fault in this claim a lot of times the insurance companies will bunt heads and they'll figure it out and they can technically go off and do their own and pay out however they want to pay out that's what the adjuster does but you're going to have them come together and determine the fault in which case that happened. For those of you that have unfortunately been deemed at fault and you don't feel that that's fair, you have to talk with the adjuster, you have to get maybe even a lawyer involved to where you have to fight that back. If it's worth it and worth your time, energy, and money, then that's where you go there. In a lot of cases, most people don't find it worth it just because the raisin increase in policy, let's say you did have an at-fault accident, is usually 20%. It can be as low as 15%. I've seen it as high as 30. It can increase a $200 a month bill to $260 a month. And it can stay there for up to three years. Some states are five years. So it can cost you three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 over the course of five years. But at the end of the day, if I'm paying a lawyer $3,000 just to fight the claim, if I lose, because I already lost once, there's a chance, then now I've lost $3,000 additional and my insurance went up. Yeah, I can go to a different company, but that claim or that ticket follows me wherever I go. Now there's the principle of it, so is it worth it and do you try to fight that back? A lot of times you can speak with the adjuster. Unfortunately, when they've come together and made the decision, usually that's not necessarily locked in stone, but that's essentially the process. If it's been reversed, and that can happen, you can now get what's called a letter of experience to where they can pull that data back. If it doesn't update in the system to the state's website, you can have them send you a letter of experience. And then if you ever shop around or go to a different company, you can provide that letter of experience from your insurance company to say, hey, this was the claim, here's how it was filed, we fixed it, it was not their fault. So you have those options available to you. I know there's a lot of different scenarios. Let me know in the comments below how your scenario played out. Did you win it? Did you lose it? What was the cases that you were able to go through? If you are still trying to go through any type of claim, I do have a claims video to how to work with an adjuster. Otherwise, YouTube thinks that's a great video for you to watch as well. I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.